This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. SliceOnBroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. It is the Wrestling Mayhem Show 724. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on Twitter here in Sorgatron Media Studios in Pittsburgh, PA, ready to talk professionalized wrestling on this coast-to-coast edition of this show. You know, we can't do the Wrestling Mayhem Show without at least having somebody in a different state. And this time, we brought somebody all the way from the West Coast. Alex Cars of Occupy Pro Wrestling is joining us. How you doing, Alex? Yes, I'm doing good. How are you doing, Sorg? I love that you're coming to us from a wrestling ring, from inside a wrestling ring, but apparently oh, yeah, don't. in the middle of the clouds of a thunderstorm. Yeah, don't don't mind the clouds. Is that what you think? You, the, you just can't you just can't stand these sunny days, huh? Um, sure. Okay. <laughs> Well, good to have you back on the show. It's been a while. Uh, and also also back with us is the uh, manager to the stars, Ronnie Starks. Hello, everyone. How many how many Ghostbuster figures did you just buy again? Uh, no ghost. Well, no, that's a lie. Uh, well, I found another set. I only have two sets now. Only the, two sets. Box. I have an open one and I have a uh, a box one That's of the it. of the original Ghostbusters. Well, the re-releases. The re-releases. This year. Yes. But, uh, I, I, I kind of as far them. as the originals go, I have a few sets of the originals. I, I kind of called them out the other day about that. I'm just like, I was laughing. like, well, how was many like, do you oh. need? How many do you need? Plus, you have That's these it. original originals too, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, so I, I mean, I have two sets of the original originals too. Jeez, Ghostbusters, yeah. love it. <laughs> I'm done with the. I'm done with everything. You're done. Um, You're done. I just need nasty neck, and that's it. Nasty neck. What was nasty? Yeah, neck? I'll, I'll send you a picture of that guy. Okay. Later. Okay. Kind of he, was a, he was a goblin. He was one of the goblin figures. Oh, one of the guys that like came with him or something. Like no, I'll, I'll send it to you. Okay. Yes. He's gonna send me a thing. Uh, but it is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Uh, before we get into it, hey, I want to give a shout out. Uh, you may notice this wonderful shirt, the Dutters and the PB Smooth, and there's a Derek Direction in the corner. The Cancer Sucks Air, Bu- Air Bike Derby t-shirts have come in, uh, and, and, and props out to everybody that, that, that jumped in on that as well, all that money. Uh, all the proceeds went to Dutters to help pay for the hospital bills uh, for breast cancer she's going through right now. Uh, so uh, th- this is happening. The Air Bike Derby is happening um, Thursday night on Instagram Live. So please follow PB Smooth and Derek Direction over there. I believe it's going to be a joint kind of uh, Instagram Live from what I understand. And I think it's going to start with at 6, I think the time was. Follow their social media. They'll have the details for it. want to give a shout there and also props to Eric Ryan and Jack Pollock. Uh, uh, together on uh, 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 designing and putting out these shirts. Uh, I was excited to get this uh, today and, uh, for, for, for everything. So uh, so props to that. And uh, and, and, and thank you everybody that, that, that's helped out our friend Dutters uh, through those, uh, those, those adventures through the last couple of months uh, through the <laughs> multiple GoFundMes that were happening apparently. Um, because I saw another group, another of her crews also started GoFundMe pretty much the same day. Uh, but, and, and it's, it's just amazing. Um, I think at least, at least $8,000 was raised for, um, out of all of that, not to mention the t-shirts. I don't even know what the, well, the t-shirts were, um, that were, went through indie wrestling.us. I, Okay, I should know because it's my site, but I didn't manage that part. That was that was producer Missy that handled that. But are those uh, shirts still available? Because I gotta get me one of them. I think if you, I do, I think I thought we officially cut it off, but I think if you message a certain producer of the show, she may be able to help you out. Okay, so I've like been out of the loop of everything. I don't know what's happening. I know, man. Where world. you been? What's happening? I don't well, know. I mean, I, I remember when I sent money through. Uh, GoFundMe. I didn't know how to use GoFundMe, so it came up as anonymous, probably. So oh, I, I, anonymous. I don't know how that, Got it. I don't know how that works. It's uh, all about checking a box, I think. 
So, but this is, but this is by chance the Wrestling Mayhem Show. You can check out everything at wrestlingmayhemshow.com. Check out this as well as the Monday Night Warriors, Monday Mayhem Warriors, where we played WWE Cinematic Match Mad Libs. And if we run out of things to talk about, maybe we'll do that tonight too. Uh, so, and also whenever we get around to it, Indie Mayhem Show, we've been on a little bit of a hiatus. Hey man, I, it's 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 hard to come up with wrestling topics uh, these days. So, uh, so but there's a lot of great interviews, including we had a good uh, talk with a, a chat with a, a, a panel of people about the spooking out movement um, here at the end of the beginning of the month, including Laura Loveless, um, and of course a lot of interviews and stuff over the coronavirus and a lot of just past interviews with a lot of people over the years, including Wardlow at AEW, AEW, wow, I almost did it again, Ronnie, uh, and so much more. Uh, so um, I, I can't tell you, I'm, I'm, I need to get a date secured. He gave me the okay, but we're, I want to talk to Quinn Magnum soon about his uh, Fight Underground project and uh, pick his brain a little bit more um, than, than I do when I'm asking what kind of videos he wants for it. Uh, but... <laughs> We're gonna uh, talk to the man behind the madness here in the in the coming weeks, so stay tuned uh, for that. Also, please hit us up at that email address. Good times. Good times. Good times at wrestlingmayhemshow dot com four one two two zero six WMS zero is the hotline. Uh, you can drop a line in there. I know that uh, one uh, Mad Mike did put in his uh, Mad Mike mail uh, for tonight's assignment. So looking forward to that. Also, uh, tweet us at Mayhem Show. A little bit of Twitter going on there. Follow the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook page and group. Most of the discussion around the Wrestling Mayhem Show does happen in the Facebook group, including, as we were discussing last night, helping name uh, Honey Badger's OnlyFans account was uh, y- yesterday's exercise, uh, which I believe was uh, uh, we landed on Shut Up and Take My Honey at OnlyFans. <laughs> uh, so there Excellent. you go. And if you want to support Honey Badger, uh, over at OnlyFans, you can do that too. I did. I'm still waiting for the subscribe button, but I put my credit card in OnlyFans as I promised on the show last night to support the Honey Badger. Uh, but anyways, uh, you can also hey, we're live every Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern time. We're on the Wrestling Mayhem Show YouTube, the Wrestling Mayhem Show Twitter, Periscope, the Sorgatron Media um, uh, Twitch channel, and uh, you guys can drop in there, Facebook Live. Uh, whatever is convenient for you. Most of the chatters, of course, are going to be on the Facebook Live with us, just like Tina and Dave Potter are hanging out in there right now. Uh, also, you can support us at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show, including at our fan of the show level, our friends, Bo Diggity. As well as Ed Burke by BFJ Town Team Hammerfist at the Poppy Club Lover, our buddy, our sunburnt friend Bradley Brothers, uh, Dave Podner, Daniel Towery, and Tina Keys, uh, at the Pizza Club level, Doc Remedy and Cal Turner, and at the manager level, OccupyProWrestling.com and Farnsworth Investments. Uh, you guys, please, if you like what's going on, uh, please support us at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. I'm very excited. I mentioned this on the other show earlier tonight, but doing this in the awesome cast patrons like have actually been up over the last couple of uh, uh, months the, the the indie wrestling network has been up over the last several months um i i i, I imagine it's because you guys are all at home and bored but uh thank you everybody for um you know we're really worried with the, when the coronavirus happening but uh, you guys have uh, come out and continued or started supporting us during this period and i just want to say a big thank you to everybody has on on any of the properties that we we've had out there um to keep things going and it it, it really does help and and know that we need to keep this going uh through this and see through to the end so we can continue and do some good stuff um in uh, hopefully entertaining you and 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 continue helping uh our friends in professional wrestling so uh with that speaking of professionalized wrestling uh, and cinematic matches and optometry. Uh, we had the Extreme Rules pay per view, the horror show, the horror show. Um, and uh, I, oof, it, we, <laughs> this was this, uh, Alex. You were you were on with us watching this thing. Um, I I I personally, boy, I, was I what was that? I said boy, was I? Boy, were you? Um, I know I checked out on that swamp fight. I just, I just couldn't, I couldn't, it, it wasn't settling with me. It just, it just didn't feel right. I don't know what's up. And especially with the homework this week to remember how things used to be. And then just be like, that's not what we got on. It's not that what we got on Sunday night. Um, 
I, w- uh, w- w- people have heard us last night and everything and on Twitter, but uh, or if if you were listening in the stream or with us on 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 Sunday night, uh, Alex, how did you feel about Sunday night's pay per view? Well, it sure was a show that existed. <laughs> you just sound like Mad Mike. <laughs> yeah, no, um, I don't know. There, there was some good, for sure. Oh yeah, and oh, yeah. there, there's a part of me that's almost in bright side of wrestling mode right now, trying to l- think about all the good that came out of it. There was definitely some good stuff from it, but. I, I don't I'm I'm not sure if I want to dance around it too much. That eye for an eye match. Um, <laughs> now listen, it, and and it was a good match. It was a very good match. Yeah. It's Rey Mysterio and Seth Rollins. There yes. was some good wrestling happening there. I f- I feel okay. So okay. So my main thing about it is when when they started promoting this and. The, one of the things to keep in mind, I have not watched Raw and SmackDown or even <laughs> NXT in months. Oh wait, so you just even you walked into this cold? Yes. <laughs> I I am I am in like various Discord servers where we talk about the shows as they happen, but that's the only way that I'm aware of the storylines. Okay. Otherwise, I'm basically cold on on stuff. So when they started promoting this eye for an eye match. I'm thinking, oh, this is going to be another cinematic match, isn't it? And it wasn't. It should have been, to it be really been. honest. Yeah, to the point. I think, Good. Because uh, uh, here's the thing. The way I see it, when I first heard that they were talking about doing an eye for an eye match, I said, oh, okay, uh, is Krista Joseph still working for WWE? Because this feels like someone finally watched Lucha Underground saw that Rey Mysterio was on Lucha Underground at one point and said, hey, Vince, I've got an idea for you. Rey isn't working with a contract right now. Here's how we can write him out for the time being until we can either get him to sign a new deal or not. Also also possible. But I, I feel like it's the thing that Krista Joseph <laughs> pitched on the last day and then walked away. Not knowing that Vince would say okay to it. No, no, not caring or see how they'll handle this. You know, like, kind oh, of situation. You know, just, 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 just give him an eye for an eye match, you know? Yeah, just, just yeah whoever, eye for an eye match. Thinks the other guy's like, yeah, bye, I'm out of here, see ya. I'm gonna go, I don't know. I just think there was, I, 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 you know what, we, I don't know. we did the Mad Libs. I, I feel like they're also doing the <laughs> Mad Libs. You know, you're just like, Bray, he used to be in a swamp. Okay, he's the old Bray Wyatt. All right, we'll have a fight in a swamp. How are we gonna do it? <laughs> Stay Make out it of my swamp. Make it good. Make it good. Like they did uh, with the uh, Boneyard Make it, match. Make it. Make it a win, as uh, Titus O'Neil used to say. Well, it's definitely telling. Like Triple H on an interview, uh, I believe on uh, with Corey uh, on his podcast was uh, was was the conversation with Vince was what's a boneyard match, and he said, "I don't know, figure it out." <laughs> and that's of what course. we got. And he just helmed it with Borash and that crew uh, down out there, the web team down at the Performance Center, and and we got the boneyard match. You know, so. And and now that's become okay. Let's do this, you know, on on a lot of cases. And then they need to. If they just did a straight wrestling show, I don't think WWE would pull off something that would have our interest as much as this insane stuff that they're doing right now. Ronnie, yeah. Ronnie, um, you've been a part of some uh, insane things in professional wrestling. Um, sometimes just the wrestling. But uh, what what was your take? I don't think you didn't watch this, but I know you've probably seen pictures and clips. Of, of this situation with the eye for an eye match, what was your take on the horror show and and, and, and things and the eye and just everything? I think we can say the the show was a horror show. Mm-hmm. Uh, from what I understand, uh, I know that the Bray Wyatt match probably wasn't the best because people complained about it the entire time. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I was laughing really hard when I saw the uh, the ping pong ball being held up to Ray's eye. Mm-hmm. And like they used the they used the red uh, marker and made it look like like blood. And I'm like, come on, guys! You could have made more effort put into that. Did you see the like, sequence? Did you did you happen to see the sequence of when when it was revealed? Uh, no, uh, no. Basically, he was gonna go. I, was it gonna curb stomp him into the? So he was uh, gonna curb stomp him. Seth walks up to him. Ray is facing him, so you don't see Ray's face. You just yeah. see Seth react to it. Which, by the way. 
if we didn't see that ping pong ball, pong ball thing, uh, by the way, I, I feel that like much like Alien, not seeing the thing makes it worse. Yes. Than seeing the reaction. It, you know, because it leaves more to the imagination. And then Seth pulls four draws and uh, seemingly vomits on on Q. By that the was way, it's gonna, I, it's gonna, it's gonna puke. I know, I know, he's going up. He's I know, up. I know. The the mandatory, he's gonna puke. So, so I I also want to pause it. Like, remember that these are pre-recorded. Mm-hmm. It's quite possible we did a take for him to puke. Or had him put something in his mouth to simulate or something like that. I just so wanna... how many times do you think he puked? I don't think he... No, I I, I'm ha- I would like to think in the vomiting world... I know I know some of us just ate dinner on the West Coast. I think in the vomiting world, Seth is a one-take wonder. So you think they shot that? It's perfect, Seth. Perfect puke. Mm-hmm. Now let's pan the camera over Ray Mysterio. Like it's... Like I saw the pictures, and then I went on YouTube after the show, and I watched the sequence. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I just no, it doesn't work like that. Like, <laughs> what the vomit like, part or the eye part? Just the eye part. Okay, like, yeah, yeah. It, like all of a sudden, I'm like, oh no, his his eyeball is out. Like, like yeah, okay. And they they they, <laughs> they went to a medical facility. It's like yeah, somebody's going to a medical. I don't. Know. I'm just sad we don't have pirate Seth. Really, in the long run, I'm sad we don't have pirate Seth. Uh, but I, I kind of wanted it. The, the 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 thing is though that I I guess that like I said that's the other thing that got me, uh, especially when I was reading the, the rumor or the news or whatever that Ray was didn't even have a contract at the time. I'm looking at this match. I'm thinking they're writing Ray out. There's no way Seth is going to lose this match, right? Because what's he going to do with the time off? Because you know, but it's like. Oh, and, and then there's the fact that they did the whole thing sometime after the match where they're like, oh, yeah, we, we got him to the facility and they gave us the, the slight vaguely scientific <laughs> mumbo jumbo to explain why they that why he didn't actually lose an eye. That's like, OK, cool. So oh, on top oh. of doing this really dumb gimmick, you found a way to to, to you found a way to completely. <laughs> Just prop it Here back in, man. That's all. And then we go to a one yeah, it's just like a disjointed elbow. Yeah, just kind of like yeah, hold on. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Pop right back in. You're good. Well, then you have Vader losing his eye, which was a shoot, and then then you have this. And it was just the worst thing ever. Nobody Somebody ever referenced con- it. Nobody ever referenced that this actually happened to Vader. Like I think that would have helped. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what was it? Uh, because honestly, I, like, I don't mean to jump around too much, but it's like there was that, but then there was also Dolph versus Drew. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I'm just going to reiterate the joke that I made during our, our hangout the other night. I'm just going to say that Dolph explaining the stipulations was basically what happens on Mayhem Mania when someone decides to try to do like five moves in a turn and try to explain how they can get away with doing five moves in a turn. That's what that was. So, so, so I really, I really wish Matt Carlin's was on here because I think we would just restate Dolph Ziggler's uh, match rules and ask if it would qualify as a Patreon in the Bank match rule if we were doing Mayhem Mania right now because I think that's a very and I know he's been in the chat room so I want to hear and, and again the rule was and help me because there was a lot there's a lot of layers like what is your this is like what is your stipulation to the match and it is. This is an extreme rules match, but only for me. And if you get disqualified or counted out intentionally, you use the championship. I was like, is it a rule because you didn't breathe saying it or punctuation or, <laughs> you know, so it's all one rule, even though I feel like that's a list. I feel like there should have been a there should have been a, a, a visual cue card with the rules explained, just like at the Royal Rumble, because there was a lot. Going oh, yeah. On there. Or like the, the you know like the good old days when oh uh, I'm trying to remember I don't remember what pay per view it was it was at an in your house I think and it was uh it was the original it was like Armageddon rules and it was like uh it was like a last man standing but like you had to pin the person for a three count and then oh, it was a ten count that's an old Texas death match rule, yeah it was right? it was a mod it was a modified version yeah. of Texas death match rules yeah so it's just like. But they called it Armageddon rules, and that was like the whole thing to that. And it's just like, 
Okay, so that's what's going on here. The uh, the official line from Mainstream Man in the chat room is, after hearing Dolph, I don't think he should ever be a part of Mayhem Mania. So uh, Dolph Ziggler, uh, as a participant, uh, a matchmaker, you are apparently banned from Mayhem Mania because we don't like your shenanigans. Uh, he's going to space jail. You're going. You're going to space jail. The <laughs> middle. Be the first person going to space jail. This which year. means you're definitely getting out of space jail. Minimal security space jail, as we learned. Space this year. jam. He said space jam. Space jam. jam. <laughs> Sorry, somebody else made a space jam joke today, and it's just in my head. Also, I need to watch that Jordan documentary. Uh yeah. Yes, yeah. the Jordan documentary, Space Jam. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it was a documentary. Yes, it's a docu film, if you will. Oh geez, um, and why do I have pictures of Lola Bunny in my feed these days? I, th- that came out of nowhere. <laughs> um, that sounds like that OnlyFans talk that you're going through again. I, I don't know. I, you never know. I, I, you never know what's going to pop up on Twitter, right? So, with that, uh, but no, other than that, like, like this, the, the, I have, a, I have a theory because the rest, the, the wrestling, the wrestling night, we had Kofi, Kofi and uh, Biggie. Again, Cesaro and Nakamura table match. It was good. It was very good. The women's matches were both very good. Had some uh, wacky finishes to it, but uh, as as we were saying last night, very attitude area booking. If you like that stuff, um, Bailey just taking the referee shirt, and I barely pay attention to Raw last night to be quite honest uh, to know what came of that uh, because no way this should fly. Uh, so, but generally. And, and I started thinking about this, and I stated it either last night or during the chat, maybe, on Sunday. We're at a different point here. These wrestlers should be turning out some classic matches more often than they, they are. And really, like, even just, you know, on the fringe, uh, uh, catching Raw last night, like, there's some very good stuff that was happening there. Um, because we're now at, remember how we, we, we had a conversation a long time ago about New Japan and how, why is it that New Japan can, can pull out this insaneness that's happening over there? And the reason is, the reason that we suspect is like, look at their schedule versus WWE. WWE, these guys are in the ring wrestling, what, four or five times a week at most, most points between house shows and tapings and all of those things. Uh, the road now they're traveling to one place i don't know maybe a couple of times a week like no more than what we're seeing on tv right they're not doing house shows they're not doing the high-end traveling on tops of things everybody that is still participating in wwe should be in the best physical shapes of their careers as far as bumps and bruises so they're gonna ideally go at it in the ring a little bit stronger and I don't want to say get, we get this New Japan style, but it should be stronger matches in the long run. Ronnie, the, you're the grizzled vet here. Am, am I on the right track? <laughs> no, you are. Um, if you're working in front of, or if you're not working in front of a crowd, you got to make it seem stiffer. No, you got to yeah. make it look more realistic. So, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. So it's they don't even be need, strong style. So you're, you're telling me they don't even need to do that much. Like just, they're just presenting for the cameras at this point. Who cares if the yeah. NXT guy in the audience notices a a soft kick or something because they're there in person. You got to work the hard cam, brother. Mm-hmm. You know? mm-hmm. Work the hard cam, make it look good. That's what you're there for. So I, we, we really kind of draw it back to the studio wrestling. Uh, yeah, that's to exactly what it is though. Uh, Alex, do you have any thoughts on that, on that, that theory we're presenting? Yeah. I mean, I, I to be honest, I agree for one thing, like, cause, um, uh, and even just to the point that you were just making of kind of it, – it's kind of going back to studio wrestling days as far as like it's a limited audience at most. And the focus is more – I want to say there's more focus on the camera work as far as like how, how you're watching stuff mm-hmm. because you don't necessarily need to cut to the crowd as much because what are you going to do? Cut to the three people in the shot wearing that may or may not be wearing their face mask and Regan. Uh, and we are, uh, but we are, we still, we still want the reactions. To right. People. We still want some kind of reaction, but I it's mean, like, like there's more, there's more of a focus on what's happening in ring. So, I, I mean, I really, as, like, the presentation I, goes, I really that. just want a, a side camera of Shotzi Blackheart, just losing her mind at ringside as she has been. 
Uh, oh yeah. To which he responded, "Yes, please continue sending me Starbucks gift cards." Uh, so, <laughs> I mean, which I appreciated so, yeah. that. So yeah, I mean, so there's that, and then like it's funny because like by comparison or contrast, or whichever term you want to use, I'm thinking about guys like um, the UWN. That's the Dave Marquez stuff, like Championship Wrestling from Hollywood. They've had so much stuff that's been like in the can. That they're still present, like they've still largely been pre- able to present stuff. I think now they're at the point of reruns, but like as far as I can tell, they were still managing to put out consistent programming with with a crowd in in the audience for some time now. Mm-hmm. And and they're also involved with the production of like speaking of New Japan, they're also involved in the production. Of a thing called I want I think it's Lions Break Collision. Yeah, I want to say I still need to watch that. There's a weekly there's weekly programming now for that focuses on the on the on the uh, Southern California dojo for the New Japan. So they've been doing a lot of work there, and so you know it's just like kind of going back to the point of like yeah you know this is pretty much studio wrestling, but with a WWE size budget. So it's a matter of WWE actually retooling their thinking a bit, and they've taken some strides. And I think the the peppering of of cinematic matches has helped in that. But yeah. it's just you know when if you're not going to do a cinematic match, then you have to still present it in a way that's watchable. Well, and and, and you need a reason for it to feel like a big deal, right? I have yeah. a feeling we would have probably had more takeovers and such by now. Um, and, and, you know, notice we've had like, a, you know, the Great American Bash became a weekly event that's becoming a norm. Uh, uh, AEW doing the same thing with their events. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I mean, kind of going into the, you know, what I think became popularized by when Impact started bringing those pay per view events in house to the whatever night, Thursday night show or whatever it was with your mm-hmm. destination X's and things like that. So, I mean, it, it's, it's, it, it, it's an evolution of things. And if anybody can do pre-taped episode of content, remember WWF F was the master of this. Um, mm-hmm. I think we shared about a month ago and I think I saw him in the chat room earlier, our boy, Hank Hudson, the legendary Hank Hudson here in the Pittsburgh area. Um, great uh, uh, ring uh, ring announcer. Um, he does these fantastic reposts of like old cards in the Pittsburgh area, old NWA, WWF, or probably more WWF uh, than NWA, to be honest. Uh, territories, pal. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> you know, in old WWF cards, old WCW cars, like things like this, this happened at the AJ Palumbo. There was, a, there was a taping, I recall, and was astonished by because it was a taping at, in West Virginia, at the, uh, in Wheeling, I believe. And it had like 10 matches on it. And you saw some guys a couple of times. And this was, I think, for Wrestling Challenge. And you got to think that was, you know, four, if not six weeks of Wrestling Challenge plus Coliseum Video and, and who knows whatever. You know, like it, it, it's crazy. And, and they're, now they're doing that now in their own studio environment that they can control. Like, again, they should be very good at this by now. You know, obviously they've been doing live for the last like 20 years, so maybe they're out of practice, but, uh, but the model is still in their, in, in their genes somewhere. So, well, uh, we'll get back around to talking about a little bit of what's going on with WWE, AEW. Um, maybe we'll touch back, touch base on some AEW stuff here after the break. I know I'm very excited about some of their t-shirts they have going on here, but in the meantime, I want to give a shout. I, again, I mentioned at the top of the show, a lot of people out there are still supporting. Uh, it's amazing for, I mean, we've really honestly had a dearth of content without wrestling shows running, to be honest. Uh, but still, uh, we are at, I can say we are at record numbers for the indie wrestling not network indie wrestling.net network indie wrestling.us a lot of great content there from our friends at rise wrestling with a y uh the entire run of prospect pro wrestling from their beginning is there uh our friends at the renegade wrestling alliance uh our friend if, you, if you've been checking into the interactive tournament that's happening with rwa uh, and you want to know what some of these old names are you know go check out at indie wrestling.us look up some of those names some of that stuff's free on youtube some of that stuff's over on the network some of the stuff is popping up on our twitch feed for the indie wrestling.us we got plenty of ways for 
for you to check out wrestling. A lot of free ways to check out wrestling. A lot of low cost ways. The point is, it's got to be easy for you guys to check out indie wrestling and check out the the people that you're going to be supporting the next. Who's going to be the next Lee Moriarty? The next Wardlow? Uh, you know, whatever the the next Britt Baker. It's all there. A lot of stuff for you guys pouring over 300 hours over at the network. Um, and of course, we give shout outs to our friends on the Grind City TV app over on Roku. We have the weekly episodes that have been going up there. You can check out all those past ones for the past 13 episodes. Um, our friends at Fight Underground and uh, Prospect Pro Wrestling have been presenting very strong over there over the last few weeks on the Grind City uh, channel. And of course, that's rebroadcast, uh, I think, three nights a week. New shows coming Wednesday nights at 11 p.m. So, Lots of ways. IndieWrestling.us is all over your internets uh, for wrestling. And, of course, helping our friends, like I mentioned, new matches just tonight. Dropped our buddies Warhoss in a match and, uh, and, and, and some great stuff the last several weeks. For Scarlett and uh, Ronnie Nicole, uh, Warhouse beating up, uh, sorry, the good guys, Ronnie. Uh, <laughs> so, and okay. uh, the Rev and AJ Alexander, Arthur MacArthur uh, uh, against Flex Simmons from the ROH Dojo. Uh, 2PW still doing their quarantine challenge. Guys, if you have not checked out the team of Tyler Klein, the Trophy Boy, and Super Hentai, I don't know what you're here for because that you know that's going to be a lot of fun. The Hossman get mixing up with Board of Education in some uh, some lethal lottery style uh, team ups. Some great matches happening over there. New matches for 2PW drop on their social media Wednesday nights at 10 p.m. and Saturday nights at 8 p.m. for the tournament matches. Uh, now through the beginning of August, uh, we have things scheduled out for as well as Fight Underground drops their new matches Tuesday nights at 8 p.m. But go check all that for free on the internet, on their social media pages, um, all over the place. All right. I think, have I mentioned all the wrestling? You know, for uh, Ronnie, for there not being wrestling, I just said a lot. a lot of wrestling. I said there's a lot of wrestling. There's a lot of reason to be excited wrestling. It's not the same reasons. But, I mean, things are things are evolving. Thing, people are finding a way they're doing wrestling shows in the middle of fields. I saw I I, I saw footage of some friends of the show doing some wacky shit at a, a basically a backyard show. GCW was running. I, I I just it's 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 um not that wrestling had trouble being insane and wonderful and fun. It just seems like there's just extra bits of creativity being thrown in there these days, doesn't there? Yep. So. <laughs> Well spoken. Uh, sorry, that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Trying to segue into a conversation, Ronnie. <laughs> you can tell he hasn't been on the show for a little bit. Yeah, I'm a little rusty. Sorry, everybody. Yeah, it's all right. <laughs> uh, what, what uh, I, I, Go ahead, Alex. I was just gonna say, yeah, it's it's been interesting. Like, I it's kind it's kind of funny because I was just watching or I was just reading. Uh, there's a promotion out in the San Diego area. Uh, they they've had to post they've had to postpone stuff for a little bit because they they now have to deal with regulations uh, even more so than they had before. But they've done one or two shows where they were basically doing what they call drive-in wrestling shows. Mm-hmm. You pay you pay to get to park ringside at a, a secret location. Yeah, we just and, had one of those last weekend. Yeah, and I don't remember how. I'm trying to remember exactly how they did it. They did it. Uh, they did it so that you, I think you could listen to commentary on the radio. Oh, that's great! I think. That's so like smart. they had like I think they had like a low frequency radio signal to be able to actually just do that. Uh, and then they also put and they ended up putting the show out on. They actually streamed the the show on their Facebook Live mm-hmm. uh, with like a. Uh, a donation link uh, with suggested donations to help, you know, cover costs and stuff. So, you know, there's ways of, of doing wrestling. There's, and as yeah. long as you're, as long as you're keeping safe and following the regulations that you should be following, then it's all good. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and that's different for a lot of people, right? Uh, West yeah. Vir- that I'm aware of West Virginia has no rules going on right now. And, and, and at least tapings. And, and I know I'm, I'm, Book for shooting a show in West Virginia uh, uh, with Conquest uh, uh, late ma- April. I'm not April, August. Wrong a month. Um, <laughs> I don't even know what day or month or year it is at this point. No, no, no. Is this July? <laughs> Today I only, is. 
today is Tuesday, right? I I mean, uh, are we in the right uh, place? Is this the right show? Is this what do you mean? This is listen to your parents. Um, <laughs> Welcome Mom, to the Calendar Mayhem up. Show. <laughs> so so yeah, the, and and then there's these these secret these secret um shows that I keep seeing flyers for that says email Jeff for the address. <laughs> it's, which I love because um we had uh Potter, referee Bobby Williams, uh uh Ronald Parker Williams, Mantis one or two, I can't remember which one. Uh, uh one. Was he, one. He was the first one, right? He was the first one. Okay. Yeah. Uh so so um He's out there shouting at me right now. I'm sure, but but in the 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 the, the uh, Devil Budokan book, it talked about Joe Perry's underground matches um, that happened out in Penn Hills, and they were the outlaw shows. That it was like secret location. Everybody gets a place to work, and also it could get shut down at any time, and nobody gets paid. Everybody knew that was the deal, and that feels like that's what's happening right now because mm-hmm. there's these secret shows ducking. Uh, uh, state athletic commissions or the state mandates on 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 rules, and but I will posit this with everybody. Please just be safe. We've talked about kind of our thoughts, uh, not not to represent who's on the show right now, uh, of of the safety of doing professional wrestling and fans out there uh, at professional wrestling and the wrestlers out there. So I just will posit that. Uh, let's re- presume a safety uh, 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 idea has been taken with this. Um, yeah, remind me to text you the uh, the location. For, oh, uh, I got the Friday. I got the location. You got okay. <laughs> <laughs> I got the secret location to the secret show. Don't worry about it. Okay. So, and it's not in PA. Nobody grill me for it. Uh, yeah. so, but anyways, I think everybody's gonna figure it out by now. But <laughs> I'm weird shit with they, keeping secrets. It doesn't have to be a secret. So, but anyways, um, but uh, no, I I I. It's 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 worrying a little bit after I see some of the footage and no social distancing happening in some of these shows, um, but also I love that again. W- w- didn't you just say that a little bit ago? Wrestling finds a way, like fucking yeah. Jurassic Park out here. Yeah. So show title: Wrestling finds a way. Wrestling does find a way, and we'll just get an egg embryo. Oh, hold on, I'm I'm sending that to uh, a certain somebody to use for his next title of the show. <laughs> 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 Jeez, what was it? What was the one show for? Well, it was uh, "Wash Your Hands and Don't Be Racist." Yeah. Was the name of a wrestling show this month? Yeah, and well, I kept I'm... seeing the graphic, and I'm like, "Oh, that's a nice statement they're saying." And then it like got to Friday night, and the stream started. I'm like, "Oh shit, that's the name of the wrestling show." Yeah, okay, and then I get it. We had, we had, "Don't Get Abducted" <laughs> by Aliens, <laughs> and then I really wanted because you know how Rob Zombie is, has a song called. Everybody's fucking in the UFO. So I, no, I don't I know them, that one. <laughs> okay, so I told them I was like, please, since we have Don't Get Abducted to have the show entitled Everybody's Fucking in the UFO. He's like, we are not using that title. <laughs> oh, I was like, Come on, man. But I'm messing him right now, saying, "Hey, <laughs> wrestling finds a way." And it's gotta be Jurassic Park themed, right? Um, yeah. Not to take from I know that was an early Rise Wrestling poster, but uh, uh, <laughs> so. Uh, that's okay. That was like three years ago. That's 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 outside the realm. Um, no, but yeah, that's been a lot of fun to say. Between that, uh, cinematic matches. It's just uh, you know, I, I think we mentioned on here before. I shared Envy Young's. Uh, the I'm 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 intrigued by the Ring of Light Championship uh, <laughs> that happens out there in New York. Uh, so I no, it's 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 fun. It's not it's not what we want. It's not easy for those involved right now to figure things out but from the start i've always said those that can be inventive in this time and i mean this for business of all types uh those that can be in de- inventive and adaptable in the times will succeed in these times mm-hmm. right yeah. i mean from we're seeing it with the mainstays with aew uh uh and wwe and and, and probably even impact wrestling you know, so I mean, it's it's a new Japan's finding a way and figuring it out. Also, Japan's just in a completely different situation. They just had fans at a show. Um, you know, like it looked like a traditional setup from the clips I've seen. I'm still on. I'm still on uh, about July second in my new Japan watchbacks. By the way, oh, so, so you don't you don't know what just oh, happened? Oh no, no, I know what happened. I, I just okay. I actually just watched the evil 
Bullet Club thing. Versus Naito. Okay. Yeah. So I know. Well, wait, did they have the match? The match happened. Yes. Oh no, I think I did see what happened, but um, don't retell me because I'll forget. No, I, I I'll forget it, by it the was, time I get to it in two weeks. Um, it was. It's great. It was yeah. good. Either way, I like the journey. I don't give a shit if I know the the winner. Come on, I, I'm yeah. there to see New Japan wrestling. Yeah. I don't even care. If anything, if I, this I had thinking watching this, if anything attributed really well to having no audience, it's Japanese wrestling, isn't it? Yes. Because typically, I love Japanese wrestling. Man. Because typically, oh. you had no sound from the crowd, anyways, not a lot. Mm-hmm. So it, it really kind of plays in with that. So, uh, but uh, it, no, definitely worthwhile. They're, they're putting out so much content on New Japan. It, it, it's definitely worthwhile. And it's great. Kevin Kelly, one man boosts are just fine by me. Uh, <laughs> it's just, hey, it's, it's, it's good stuff. I mean, I wish there was a Don Callis with them, but, uh, uh, also, Tina, Tina's, uh, Tina's pointing out, uh, psh, Washington State is is uh, shut the f down for a while. Yeah, uh, Ohio, Ohio. Uh, there's a big statement by uh, John Thorne uh, with uh, AIW. I, I saw the tweets and got the email on the mailing list um, that Ohio has basically said combat sports are done until you know at least till through the end of the year. They're not mm-hmm. even going to try to run them up, you know, versus. You know, and I've said my piece about PA. I think P, I think PA is like like stutter stepping, and I think it makes it worse. You know, so I mean, just just accept that you know arena shows just aren't going to happen. No, and just no. count count your losses and hope for January, February at the latest. Yeah, hope for or do something different. It depends on what your, depends on what your goal as a company is too. Is yeah. your goal to get butts and seats to pay the bills? You know, on the, uh, the different wrestling companies are in different positions, right? You yeah. know, or is it is your goal to make people remember that we're still around? So when we have a show, they're still interested. Yeah. Right. You like like so what what can you do there? What is in your ability to do? You know, what can you do? Is there any version of what you can do as a company that can uh, 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 still pay the bills? You know, mm-hmm. like what are, are 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 you doing it just so 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 the boys and and girls can can get some ring time when there's not a lot. Yeah, shows are happening, but still not what it was. Lee Morardi was having a good point where uh, he said he wasn't booking as many shows just to make sure he was good for the ones he had. Because mm-hmm. every time you go out there, there's a risk of catching this thing. Uh, and then you're down for two weeks and have to cancel all your shows. It's going to happen a lot, guys. You know, it's already happening when our U.S., you know, U.S. champion disappears for a month with no explanation. So there's that. Yeah. AEW is doing a crossover with Street Fighter. <laughs> Dude, I'm pumped. No, I, I just. <laughs> I'm I not going to pay $40 for a t shirt. Is that how much it is? It was $37. And I'm a 2X. I'm a 2X. That's usually a 3 to $5 uh, kick up. Uh, they're doing these crossover T-shirts. I, uh, Kenny Omega, was, I know, was wearing one in the last couple of weeks, and that was uh, that that was their kind of plug on that. They're not they're on sale. Uh, they're going live as of uh, uh, the twenty second, which is Wednesday. Makes sense. Night of the show. Like uh, I was uh, particularly eyeing this uh, Cody Cody Rhodes and uh, and uh, M Bison crossover that they got going on here. That was pretty cool. Um, there's a Joey Janela and uh, Blanca one that I saw. Uh, I, I, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't catch what the Kenny Omega one was. So uh, and, and I think uh, it was also mentioned in, in our group that this is a pretty good. This, this seems like a pretty good um, um, nod that maybe Capcom will be doing the AEW game. So oh, yeah, video game confirmed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> at this point. So <laughs> I mean, not just a clever licensing deal, hopefully. So. Um, mm-hmm. Also, there's Capcom stuff on Pro Wrestling Tees. How about that? <laughs> At this point, Wait, is it really? Well, yeah, because AEW goes through Pro Wrestling Tees. Oh, jeez, so, right. um, yeah, thirty-seven ninety-nine is the is the T-shirt, and uh, you can uh, add it to your wish list. And I, a, I like it, but I don't like it that much. Yeah, I don't like I don't like a forty dollars T-shirt price. So <laughs> I don't even like a twenty dollars T-shirt. And I, just, I mean, I mean, it sounds like a nice little thing to bundle in with the. A wrestling mayhem show shirt. 
<laughs> yes, which is also and, and available also, on ProWrestlingTees.com. Thank you for that. Nice segue. Uh, you can also buy a good guy's t-shirt on ProWrestlingTees.com. That's right. That's right. Brohema shirt, <laughs> Brohema shirt not available on ProWrestlingTees.com. I am wearing it, though. You are wearing it. Yes. Yes. But yeah, I'm putting them over. It'll never happen again. Never happen again. <laughs> Oh boy. Anyways, well guys, hey, you know, you know what will happen again? We're we're going to get together and we're going to have a slice on Broadway Ooh. visit at some point here or whenever Alex gets out here. Uh I didn't get my yearly <laughs> I didn't get my yearly visit to Alex this year because I canceled my California trip before I could have it. Man. Yep. Man, we could have hung out and watched wrestling again and seen Funny Bone. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What other weird shit happens uh, when we hang out? So, uh, But our good friend Slice on Broadway, SliceOnBroadway.com here in the Pittsburgh area. One day when you're allowed to travel, if you can swing by, yeah, make sure you, if you if you have to swing by through Pittsburgh, not that we're a connecting flight for a lot of people probably, but <laughs> you can get some Slice on Broadway. They should be at the airport. They really should be at the airport. Rico, look at the airport. I guess it's not a good idea these days. But... <laughs> Listen, if there's a uh, uh, steel cactus at the at the airport, they can definitely be a slice on Broadway. That's for sure. I don't even know if they have a pizza place. I'm sorry. I'm just falling into it. I miss traveling. I miss leaving the house. I just people in a physical I space. Tell. I don't even know. I miss I, going out of I the house. I completely believe that Alex is sitting in a wrestling ring right now because I don't know what his. I don't know what things look like for real anymore. I mean, I haven't. Seen, I mean, I, this this whole pandemic thing's uh, done a lot of a lot to all of us. Yes, yes, it you does. Know, I I went out and bought a wrestling ring and <laughs> and put it in his living room and painted the walls as clouds. Room. The best four grand he ever spent. <laughs> Got that high spot shit. Uh, but anyways, hey, we're going to be back. We're going to take a moment and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, and, and come back with a big question. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. This is the Honor Sheik. You listen to the Mayhem Show. Iran, number one. Russia, number one. USA, ah, top. We are back. It is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Of course, we are here with uh, the Kmart Mad Mike of Ronnie Starks. I am the GoBots of uh, Mad Mike. That's right. That's <laughs> right. Uh, with far, far less, uh, 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 far less points of articulation, yet more rugged. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, I can't stop laughing. That was good. <laughs> Listen, man, you haven't seen my GoBots collection. <laughs> First of all, GoBots are amazing. Yes, okay. they are. They uh, were. You just fucking made them uh, work. If you were a kid, yeah. and that's the thing you got, I gotta say, I, I mean, I got, I got a handful of Transformers. They were all from the yard sale, but, uh, but they're they like, listen, I'm not gonna pay all that money for Transformers. Keep watching your cartoon. We'll take you to the movie. But here's 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 a stack of GoBots. Here's, Go here's a stack game. of GoBots. Go Every time you go to the store, you can buy any of these GoBots, and <laughs> and I pretty much bought them all. Uh, so, oh shit. But anyways, what the hell were we at? Oh, and also the man who apparently has beef with Riz, uh, Alex <laughs> Cars, out in California, OccupyProWrestling.com. I don't have beef with Riz. It's just that man, I couldn't get him on the lying. show. You you asked Riz to come on the show. He was he said he was a maybe, and then I said, hey, if you need somebody, I can be on too. And, and yeah, then he said, and I asked him at the it. beginning of the show, I'm like, you coming on? He's like, dude, I'm playing video games. I'm like, that's his that's his thing. He's 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 uh he's working his way up the Twitch ranks. That's listen, his man, I, I I get it. You know, people go off and and they they start their own ventures from the Wrestling Mayhem show, and that's fine. There's just a uh, you know, but if 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 Riz has beef with 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 Alex, I want to know about it so and, we can quash and, it. So so okay, we're, we're, and, we're gonna throw and, that and, down in the Slack. And, and also and also because uh, I I was debating whether to really talk about it, but like I also think he just didn't want to talk about Chikara at all. <laughs> oh, uh, oh you remind already... you remind him of his greatest pain. That's what it is. We 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 had a conversation on on Messenger like the day after. It, it, it was it was something. 
uh, yeah, no, that's as far. That's about as much as I want to talk about it right now, actually. <laughs> Uh, uh, let's see. I'm in the yeah, Slack. No, Hold on, no, I'm in the no. Slack. I just I just put in the Slack. Riz, why do you have beef with Alex? And hopefully he has his notifications Jeez. on while he's doing the Twitch. So what you got beef, bro. What, what you got, got beef, beef, bro? I mean, come on, man. We gotta, uh, we gotta uh, stick together. Yeah. So I mean, you know. So there's that, and it's like, Dude, yeah, actually, everybody, yeah, please no. wear your mask um, and be kind to each other. That's my that's my mod, that's my. Uh, no, for the... Wear your mask and don't be racist. Yes. Yeah, that's just, a... just like the real shoot wrestling show. I think my phone just. I think just my battery just bed. died. Uh, <laughs> at, least, at least I got that message out, and I can't answer them back because my phone died. So this is gonna get really interesting, guys. All of you Anyways, out. Anyways, it is time brother. for the big question, and uh, we alluded to it in some discussion. I think we were talking off air about Slam Aversely briefly. Um, I, I can't remember. Time is a construct that has broken down for most of us. Um, so, uh, I think mo- a lot of us, uh, John Thorne, I saw the tweet I, and I, I literally went through the same thing probably 10 minutes before I saw the tweet of like Saturday night, I'm quarantined. I can't go anywhere. I should just go get TNA slam reversing and watch it and see what's up. Let's see what the impact guys are up to. I like those guys, you know, well, most of them, they got rid of the bad ones. Um, so I went and looked it up fight TV app and, and you know, I, I should know by now, but it was $40 and you're saying, Hey, want to give love to impact wrestling, but $40 for me watching alone in my house versus, you know, our social distancing party. We did at the Carlins for AEW's double or nothing a little bit ago. Like it doesn't, I, I it's a lot of coin. It's like, in this economy, uh, it's a lot of coin. So, so, and, and also, like, not knowing what's going on with Impact Wrestling generally. Um, so, the question coming out of all this um, is not entirely just about Impact Wrestling, but of course, we're very used to our nine ninety nine WWE subscriptions and our our New Japan for those shows, as we've discussed. Um, what would you? Not what would you pay? But let's say a thirty, forty dollar pay per view. What does professional wrestling have to do to justify you paying that again for a pay per view, hypothetically? High quality matches. <laughs> they, oh, oh, wait, break that down a little bit. What do you mean by high quality matches? Give me something I want to watch. Okay. Like, look. What do you want to watch? What kind of show do you want to watch? I mean, you know, you got New Japan, and everything New Japan does is just quality. You know, I've never had a problem with it, watching any stuff from there. And then uh, AEW, they're putting out some quality content. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not going to pay money to uh, watch some guys wrestle on a swamp. Or, <laughs> you know, like, I'm not going to pay money for that shit. I think we, like, can, you kidding me? we can say across the board, none of us would have paid $40 to watch what for, happened for on the, Sunday. No. Right? No. Heck no. No. No, 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 no. Like that's, that's I didn't want to pay nine dollars for that. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's yeah. It, 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 and if it wasn't for like like Undertaker stuff and some old stuff I'm pulling up, I wouldn't be doing this ten dollars a month. I've actually no. got yeah. I finally got to the point where I'm like, do I need WWE Network? <laughs> the answer is no. Because I went from do I need WWE Network or do I need HBO Max? Guess what I chose? <laughs> You're going to get a lot more of HBO Max. Let's be perfectly audience audience about this. Um the, 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 yeah, that would I mean that would be my answer. Like what what kind of what kind of wrestling show would I need to to pay 40 30 40 bucks for a pay-per-view? Mm-hmm. I just need the wrestling equivalent of Doom Patrol. That's it. <laughs> Whoa, wait, wait a minute. So do you, do you really want that though? <laughs> I what would be the wasn't that South Park? In the long run. Oh, Southpaw. Uh, so, so you need the wrestling equipment to do Doom Patrol. Okay, no, I, honestly, I'm I'm in, I'm in agreement with with Ronnie, and it's like at the very least, like give me something of substance with like in terms of booking, even like there were like the the matches for okay, so for all the jokes we make about how Extreme Rules turned out on paper. There were some really good matches that they were booking, and it just was kind of a matter of execution. Well, uh, okay, okay, I, I will argue some of that, but okay. 
I don't know. Again, we we talked we, we talked about this earlier. Even like my thing is like I came into this with a, a really vague understanding of those storylines. So it's like if I don't know the storylines of a show going in, then I need the ma- the actual matches t- being booked to be like of substance. Like, okay, like uh, what's the? I think the best example I can give is PWG. You know, PWG basically became the indie super card. Right. Like right. on a monthly basis. You mixed they up are, you, you mixed up a lot of people that wouldn't normally you'd see together, right? Right. And like, you know, like they're not doing shows at the moment because of everything going on. But if like if a company like that gave those kinds of matchups and charged 30, 40 bucks for a pay-per-view, I'd probably pay pay that yeah okay like because those kinds of matchups you don't need as much storytelling Mm -hmm. you know like uh like uh, i think it's been a while but like i went to i went to pwg shows this recently as like late last year and so like you had like you know, it was just kind of the point of like those those matchups that seem random on the surface, mm-hmm. but they were a good uh, they were either a good mesh of styles or they were a good clash of styles that like made for a really good entertaining match because okay. it's going to be very hard to do storytelling uh, if people if people like me are not necessarily catching up on storylines. So, but if you're but but, but putting so- on. Yep. I'm sorry. If, if I can, I can move in a little bit to just kind of expand on your point. I, I think, and, and you kind of roll along with you. I'm thinking about what makes me, what makes me decide to drop money and drive to Cleveland for a wrestling show. Right. And that was ICP were there and Lee Moriarty versus Alex Shelley. Right. A match you want to yeah. see. So and, and again, not something for us. I mean, the storyline is you know it's a different storyline. You don't have weeks of build up. You literally have internet build up, right? So Ooh. so so you're looking for that kind of formula in your pay per views, right? Right, that kind of thing that says is that is that indie family? Oh, you know, like like <laughs> things that make you so say mm, things that make you say huh. Huh. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um. You, you want that? I mean, we get that with New Japan when it's like, "Hey, you ever want to see uh Jericho and who did he fight? Akata? Not Akata. Um, who did he feud with when he first came in? I can't. Naito. Naito. Yeah. You want to see yeah. Jericho and Naito? It's like, fuck yeah! I didn't know I wanted to see Jericho and Naito. Let's do this. Versus WWE, it's really. I mean, like, can you get excited about Dolph Ziggler and Drew McIntyre? Because we've seen it a hundred and fifty times on Raw. Right, and nobody asked for it. Yeah, like, nobody, nobody. Yeah, asked nobody's. For. There's nothing anybody's claiming for. I mean, I, I get limited yeah. stuff, but it's like you still got a lot of pawns you can work with WWE, right? To mm-hmm. make things interesting. Right. I mean, isn't the, today? Isn't now a great time to give me Drew McIntyre versus r Truth for a legitimate championship shot? I'd be okay with it. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. Right? yeah title, right? title versus title. You know, like would, would yes, now, title versus title. Yes. Would now be a really good time to give me. Uh, MVP versus Ricochet for real match for the title. Yeah, for real match, yeah. not bullshit beat down clan whatever this is. But like, 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 honestly, honestly, if you if you keep pushing that, that you know what I wanted to see off of that pay per view. The eye thing got me interested. It was like, how the fuck are they going to do this? Let's see that. That's your shock value. Swamp Fight was like, what the fuck is this going to be? Um, but <laughs> on paper, you I, I hate saying on paper because I think the match is really delivered. Your Sasha versus Asuka and Bailey versus Nikki and your New Day versus uh, Cesaro and Nakamura. I was like, yeah, that's shit I want to see. Yeah. Give me more no, of this. Exactly. Give me more of this. Um, mm-hmm. And... and but it's still not enough for a forty dollar pay per view, you know. No, it doesn't work. Um, but ten bucks a month, yeah, sure. I'll also see uh, Undertaker tell stories. I've heard a couple times. Yeah, and I guess I, to be honest, I think that's my main thing. It's like you'll notice that in none of this, what in none of what I was describing, that I ref- try to really refer to anything WWE related because I think WWE has kind of set themselves up to where I don't think and 
I think we, we're almost all in agreement at this point. No one's going to pay full pay-per-view price for a WWE pay-per-view no. at this point, no. especially not when they have positioned themselves to say, hey, buy, uh, subscribe to the network so you can get a show like this yeah. for free on top of everything else. They have, uh, commo- they have commoditized wrestling. We have, you know, we've, we and other people have had this discussion since what, uh, 2014, I think, mm-hmm. when the network launched, bringing a week before WrestleMania, and then people were having trouble. Some people were having trouble watching WrestleMania because oh, of it. Oh, I mm-hmm. remember. Yep, yep. Hey, but you know what? They, after that, fir- after that first year, they gave those of us who stuck by it a uh, free T-shirt mm-hmm. or like a credit for a free T-shirt. At the yep. Shop. I and I I routinely bought my first ever Hulk Hogan shirt and received it a week before we found out how shitty Hulk Hogan was. <laughs> yeah, that's why I, I I use my credit to get a Bray Wyatt shirt. I might have so also gotten my. No there. I might have also picked up that Enzo hair at the time. I was making bad decisions. Okay, you let's were. just what be honest. Hell, that's, yeah. that's I was that's, not that's backing I, the right horses. That's what you get when you when you're uh, uh, hitching your wagon to the to the hot new thing. The hot, the hot new, new thing? thing like Hulk Hogan. <laughs> uh, <laughs> In 2015. <laughs> Yeah, dude. I hey, listen. I watched. I I was at the Raw before WrestleMania in 2015, uh-huh. and Trigan. I remember how ecstatic I was that I got to see Hulk Hogan in person for like the first time ever. You know, and that was obviously before everything went to crap with with obviously, Hogan. But still, obviously, and it's a it's a pro it's a problem. But you know, yeah, you guys want to know something that was the greatest thing I ever saw. Hmm. When I went to Philadelphia for Slammiversary, and I saw Hulk Hogan versus Sting. <gasps> yeah, yeah. Let, let me tell you Listen, how fucking man. terrible that was. Listen, man. Like, I don't know. If I, I'm not ready to watch a match, but all I need, all I needed at, at that time, if Hulk Hogan comes out, and I only got to see Hulk Hogan once, and I think... Was it a debate with Shawn Michaels, maybe, at a Raw here in Pittsburgh? But it was oh, the no. only time I got to see Hulk Hogan. Oh, oh no. And, and you don't know how hard it was for me to spend a weekend with Zach Allen and not ask him what Hulk Hogan was like. Uh, <laughs> actually, I don't want to know the answer. But, uh, it, it, you know... <laughs> Uh, but but Hulk Hogan comes out, he hits that music, and I gotta be, you know, honestly, and you know, you don't remember the shit. You remember Hulk Hogan in 1987 when you were a kid listening to that music, and your mm-hmm. member berries kick in. Same with Ultimate Warrior, you know. Mm-hmm. So See, I mean, it, it's it, it's it, it's funny. It's funny to talk about those specifics because I remember vividly the fact that the reason Hulk Hogan was out there was because Snoop Dogg got interrupted by Axel Mania and then <laughs> Hulk Hogan decided to finally put Curtis Axel in his place with Snoop Dogg in the ring. With Snoop so Dogg there you in go. The ring. That's wild. That's wild. Yeah, Snoop Dogg in the ring together. So that that that's a moment in and of itself. That's, that is a historic presence right there. But uh, yeah, it's Oh jeez. So yeah, I, yeah, well, we, we, we don't think we answered it because <laughs> we were just like. No, well, ah. um, well, my my point is like, my point is basically that like I think it's at this point WWE can't seem to do anything that would get me to pay more than the ten a month for mm-hmm. a show, but something yeah. outside of WWE probably could with the right like mm-hmm. matchups. Mm-hmm. And in fairness, like you know, you see stuff. Like you see stuff even on like independent wrestling TV, like um, stuff on Fight TV, you know, like with the GCW backyard show that they did for yeah. in Fourth of July, yeah, you know, stuff like that where they're at least trying, yeah, you know, <laughs> at and least those, are, those are like those are also monthly subscription situations as well. Yeah, those are monthly like, and GCW and, I think was a pay per view, but and, it was like a cheaper. The most you're gonna pay is whatever. twenty bucks for one of those. Right. Yeah. I haven't seen an indie do more, honestly, more than fifteen. Right. Mm-hmm. Um. Like you know, Ring, you know, Ring of Honor still. It, it just like I don't know. Ring of Honor is probably the, honestly, I can't say recently, but the the, you know, not New Japan, not WWE, 
what Ring of Honor would be the closest to like the I know I'm going to see a good wrestling show because Ring of Honor, frankly, has never disappointed for the most part. Um, okay, the last show was kind of weird, uh, but you know, <laughs> I yeah, it was, it was. Um, but uh, a- anyways, and, and I'm looking, I'm now I'm looking at those pay per views on Fight TV. But um, anyways, well, you know what's a value? Indie Wrestling at five ninety nine a month. You will not be disappointed. Uh, <laughs> Anyways, uh, it is time to get educated. We had our assignment. It was Daniel Bryan and Bray Wyatt in the cage on Monday Night Raw. I believe this is the second Monday Night Raw of 2014 in January uh, against the Usos. And uh, this was a a big moment. Of course, uh, Professor Jacob Edwin, please support him for wrestling prowrestlingtees.com slash Jacob Edward. That's J O the K. I mean, we have a link. Don't worry. We have a link on the Facebook and everything. Uh, but uh, uh, so support higher education on the Wrestling Mayhem show. But this was the time when Daniel Bryan had gone over to the Wyatt family side and they were in the cage and we ended with the cage was locked. Kane. Business Kane, by the way, who co- still comes out to the fire burns like music and and Titantron in a suit, which always <laughs> just I got a kick out of, um, came out to chain the door shut. So there was literally only escape over the top for an escape win. Uh, the Usos win, and we are left with Bray and. Uh, uh, Daniel Bryan in the middle of the ring. Guys, I know you guys didn't rewatch this, but I know you did the first time around when this happened. What do you uh, recall? What are your member berries for this match? I'll take it first. Go for it. Um, from what I remember of the whole situation was uh, people didn't like the fact that Daniel Bryan got put with the Wyatt family. Okay. So I think what that lasted like a whole two weeks mm-hmm. and then they scrapped it and he turned on Bray. Mm-hmm. So basically, you know, he was there. Everybody's like, oh, this is terrible. We want Daniel Bryan as a face again. So he locks the cage. They win. And then, you know, Daniel Bryan and Bray have their little stare down. You know, Daniel hits Bray. He takes off his little jumpsuit, does the whole yes thing, hits the uh, – he hit the kick, right? And that's how it yep. went down. And yep. then put the yes lock in. Uh, I yeah. can't remember what they ended with, a uh, yes lock or whatever, but it was the kicks and, and he, he, he took it to him and – uh, yeah. uh, and and ended up uh in, on on top of the cage. Uh, Alex, I mean, oh, go ahead, Ronnie. Finish your thought. Yeah. Anyway, um, I mean, Daniel Bryan has been hot forever. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's yeah, sure, that was a good segment. The fans loved it, but the whole idea of him going with the Wyatts was just terrible. Mm-hmm. So I, dude, okay, okay. Uh, Alex, uh, what, what what do you remember about this match? Um. Well, to be honest, my memory is still a little hazy. I'm trying to remember. Was this bef- was this before the Uso Penitentiary stuff? The what? Or did they already? The, oh, this like, is way was this before, before or after they. This is this was way before. This okay. appears to be pretty early Usos. This is 2014. Okay, this is, 2014. This is your lead-in. This is the same month. That is it? Pittsburgh booed the shit out of Batista. Oh, that's right. Okay, okay. See, this this is. I was trying to remember what year this was. That was part of my problem. This okay. is WrestleMania yeah, 2014. 30. This was this was the, this was lead up to. Okay, yeah, so this was basically in the midst of a lot of people rooting for Daniel Bryan mm-hmm. and WWE saying, "Screw you guys. We know what we're doing." Mm-hmm. Uh, so, as far as the match itself goes, okay. So, if this was long before the USO penitentiary, that means this was when the USOs were wearing face paint. Yep. And that was probably the only way you could tell which USO was which during the match. Yep. And that's probably as much as I can say about the match itself. Because right off this hand, I don't remember much. Otherwise, I'm kind of with with Ronnie as far as like remembering the story around Daniel Bryan being in the Wyatt family and the fact that it basically fell flat because there was a I feel like there was a lot of there was a lot of fantasy booking about how they could have or should have done it where it's like because the whole I I remember 
the one thing I remember so well about it was this was at a point where Daniel Bryan was like feeling down on his luck or whatever. Mm -hmm. And the Wyatts were trying to bring him in to the fold as a way to like, Hey, you know, this, you know, we can help you out or whatever, you know, like join our family. So it was like a lot of the fantasy booking had to do with, uh, didn't they kidnap him at this point? Yes. Yeah. Like that's, and he came back out and he came out the next week and he was a part of it. Cause they, right. just, jumps like they kidnapped that's all, Kane. That's something. all. That, and that's all they did with that. They like, they did some build up to it, but that's all they actually did with it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then it was like, like Ronnie said, the couple weeks or whatever of him wearing the jumpsuit. But there was a lot of fantasy booking of like, okay, well, if they're going to take it this far, they can do a whole thing where it's like, uh, okay, quick reminder. This was, bef- this was before the Royal Rumble, correct? Mm-hmm. Okay. Cause it's like, I think one of the, one of the big things was like, I kind of feel like some of the fantasy booking was what they a- actually did with Randy Orton. Uh, a couple a couple years down the line okay. because that was when Orton was a part of the family quote unquote yeah and won the rumble i think some of the fantasy booking i saw had it where daniel bryan won the rumble as part of the wyatt family and maybe they would have done something in a similar vein mm-hmm. but it's like at the very either that or at least have that particular feud culminate at the rumble maybe have daniel bryan eliminate bray wyatt at the rumble and, and we go from there, you know? Right. But instead, we had it culminate at this slightly random cage match against the Usos. <laughs> so that was which, basically which it. Which led you know? into a match that was the opening match at Royal Rumble between Bray and, and Daniel Bryan, which was hot. If not the highest, uh-huh. positively hottest thing of the night at the Pittsburgh-based Royal Rumble that we attended, other than some stuff with CM Punk, I'm sure. Last night for mm-hmm. CM Punk. The also. last, the last CM Punk show. Yeah. And Sorry, guys. Um, so, uh, I, well, let me let me read Mad Mike's uh, mail on this since he's he's out for this week. Uh, so he is saying, "Greetings, fellow Mayhemers from the dreaded swamp known as New Jersey." Mm-hmm. Uh, so the assignment this week was an interesting one, especially given uh, what else happened with Bray this week. Mm-hmm. The match itself was perfectly fine. I think cage, tag team cage matches need to be used uh, more often as it always creates a fun dynamic. Uh, I miss being able to <laughs> tell the Usos apart from their face paint, even if Lawler can't. Also, this commentary team was Jerry Lawler, Cole, and JBL. Well, what are we doing at this point? Um, but even as our so-called professor pointed out, the assignment isn't about the match. It's about the aftermath. I had to say as hot as the crowd of reaction was, I remembered this turn being a, a bit more dramatic than it was. I know Brian wasn't in coveralls for that long, but, uh, I don't, I don't know. just the, the turn just seemed ineffective. Maybe it's just because, uh, I'm, I'm looking at it knowing and nothing, uh, really happened from this. Uh, but it's a very... But it's a very of its time moment. Well, that's it for me. Oh God, why is Blister Abigail here? Uh, White Alchemist standing from this transmission. Um, so my take on things, uh, and, and I actually watched because I, I, they bookended the the show. They actually started with a match with the Usos at the beginning of the show, uh, which got squashed with all the Wyatt family getting involved and everything, and of course turned into a cage match by the end. Uh, so by the way, side note, um, our, can anybody guess who the general manager was at this time? Ooh. Quick guess. Um, 2014. Paul What's that? Paul Heyman? Uh, no. Alex? No. Jeremy Maddox. Jeremy? At- what? Brad Brad Maddox. Brad Maddox. Thank you. Where did I get Jeremy from? Uh, <laughs> that was Jeremy Maddox. <laughs> uh, but anyways, I like Brad Maddox. I, love that I had, wish they would have done something. I love that they had kick on his on his on his boot. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> anyways, uh, I so I watched that. No, the the match was fun. Um, I, I I I also remember this being a dramatic turn situation. Um, Looking at this match and recalling what happens next at Royal Rumble and the fan reaction that we experienced, 
And also looking in the chapters and seeing Batista's returning at Royal Rumble was in the promos that night. It's like, okay, all right. I, I remember exactly where we were in the feelings at this time. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, it was quick, fantasy booking aside and everything like that. Um, but I think they were doing several weeks. You know, this was this is an over Christmas era thing because remember this was the second week of January, so we had probably bullshit Christmas show three weeks before this. Whatever happened, that so you talk about the time frame, and then you need a couple weeks to build to the actual Natural Royal Rumble. So, um, I I I think you know, pretty expertly done as far as a, a, a pull in this kind of swerve at the end. I love how, and again, being a little fresher with this in my mind than you guys haven't just watched this today. Uh, remember there was that thing where you did something wrong and, and why it would uh, uh, put you in the sister Abigail and take you out kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So they did that. And then Brian wiggles out. And goes at it with him and takes the overalls off and everybody's turn. Whole time during this match, everybody's saying, chanting Daniel Bryan, right? As if he hasn't changed, as if trying to snap him out of it. Like one of the strongest cheers. We don't get cheers like this anymore. Oh, well, none of us. We don't get any cheers anymore, let's be honest. But like the strength of this. Um, and to get to the end when he turns and he's finally doing the yes chance. I forgot how amazing it was to see an entire arena of thousands of people in sync doing the movements. Mm. That is some attitude area era shit right there as far as crowd interaction. And it's fucking phenomenal and shame on WWE for the things they were trying to do in this era uh, and not recognizing and capitalizing on it. I mean, how many times have, you know, Braun Strowman should have been champion two years before he was, yeah. right? Um, and who knows whatever reasons they give for it, weird reasons, audiences of one, as somebody mentioned in the chat room earlier when we are talking about tapings. But, man, did they almost miss the boat on this. And, mm-hmm. man, Daniel Bryan could have been somebody else's cash cow if he got frustrated mm-hmm. enough. Um, but uh, you, you – you watch this again and you remember Royal Rumble and you're saying, of course, Royal Rumble fell the fuck apart because every fan just unilaterally is behind Daniel Bryan. Mm-hmm. Uh, can you, um, can is, you imagine a Daniel Bryan in AEW if AEW was a thing back then? Oh, God. Oh, give, 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 give me an, Daniel Bryan in AEW now. Yeah. Jeez. Jeez, yeah. that would be incredible. Yeah, I mean, and and the way that things are going, I could see him getting pissed off and leaving. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's been you ever hear a podcast with him? He does not like. He feels guilty being a wrestler on television. Really? He does. He wow. feels like the people watching him and putting so much energy into him could be doing things better with their time. Wow. <laughs> uh, I believe he was. It was one of the first episodes of him on jimmy jacobs podcast um go back and listen to that like that's it's he's not he's happy to wrestle he's not happy to be, have <laughs> he's not happy he thinks the fans can do better than him in life choices apparently is is was my inter- interpretation of it so uh, it was and i get it i get it. I, I i i understand where he's coming from you know, given his his worldviews and everything, but uh, it was it was just wild to hear that. I'm just like, wow. Um, of course, you're never going to hear that except for like an off podcast, like Jimmy Jacobs, you know, or something like that. But yeah, it's it's fascinating. So, anyways, um, with that, so that, that no, it was it was a good moment, and um, and it, it gave you uh, when you get back to the yes chant, I get my. Uh, I get the I get the wrestling chill. Um, like what I was talking about when the, if the Hulk Hogan music hits and he walks out, given the uh, ear the ear sign, like I'm going to get the wrestling chills. I'm going to be eight year old, uh, 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 a little me again 
uh, uh, watching the uh, WrestleMania five tape uh, for the hundredth time. You know, it's that's just where I'm going to be. And and just like that, I was taken back to 2014 and how amazing that was, you know, it all came crashing down and hurt inside. Uh, But anyways, we have a new assignment. Jacob Edwin uh, has an assignment that I have queued up over here. And let's see what he has in store for us this time. What era are we going to go into here in professional wrestling? Hello, Wrestling Mayhem Show. My name is Professor Jacob Edwin. This week's assignment is to show that the best matches aren't always the longest matches. You can have a great, quick, and succinct match. And it will show all parties' strengths and weaknesses and best qualities. Uh, Someone that is one of my favorites, absolute favorites to study, is William Regal. So we're going to go to January 20th, 2002, uh, for Edge versus William Regal for the Intercontinental Championship. Please enjoy. And as always, uh, I'd like you to watch without your cell phones. Take handwritten notes because then you might actually pay attention. Thank you. I will gladly watch that match. There you go. There's that smoothly executed uh, uh, video cue for Jacob Edwin. So we got Regal and Edge from 2002, that you say? Uh, yep. Fantastic. Looking forward to that. I, I love dropping in these these different eras and, and, mm-hmm. and bringing back all the member berries. So... Uh, with that, it's, shut up, notifications. You now, now I hear everything. Uh, guys, what did you learn from wrestling this week? Well, I learned that uh, you could take a red marker and you could draw on a ball and uh, you know use it as an eyeball. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Good job, WWE. I learned that there is some wrestling that. Um, don't age well after four weeks these days. Yeah, there's been some creative le- editing lately uh, from stuff in June. So <laughs> there's just references to people that were okay to be referenced in, in early June that aren't okay right now. And yeah. uh, see if you catch them in the next couple of weeks <laughs> over around stuff. So it's, uh, uh, yeah, it's interesting. Alex? Yeah. I learned, give me a second. Oh, yeah, I learned that uh, for all intents and purposes, Impact is apparently running a storyline with Heath, formerly Heath Slater, that's more or less an equivalent of when he didn't get drafted. Are you saying, oh, the free agent thing? Yeah, the free agent thing. That's ba- I, I was just thinking about it just now because he's got this whole thing where it's like he's, he's technically a free agent. For all intents and purposes, and that's great. I think it's, I think it's great. I think it's great that he has some sort of platform. Also, the fact that he was on Raw recently, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. practically shooting on Drew McIntyre, yeah, yeah. In, yeah. and then it's suddenly on Impact. <laughs> but he's basically doing the same kind of. It's a, well, not the same. He's doing a similar storyline to when he was the last person to get picked. And neither brand actually drafted him, and that's what led into the "I've Got Kids" angle. Yes. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Which, funny enough, also I think partly led to him teaming with Rhino. Yep. Which is why it's more. Which makes it even more all the more interesting, like to see him and Rhino reunite at Impact Slammiversary. So. Maybe there's a big angle with that. I don't know. You know, who knows? At some point, Heath may actually sign with Impact. But for now, yeah. I just I couldn't help but draw the parallels. Is my point? Absolutely, absolutely. I'm, I'm pretty sure he's already signed. <laughs> From the chat room, uh, Dave Ponder learned that Randy and RJ City have a good Twitter feud, better than the TV show. Randy, Randy, <laughs> Randy Orton. Yes, Randy Orton is taking shots at RJ City and vice versa on Twitter. Oh my god, I need to catch up on this. I how I not notice this? I mean, I I he listen, so, there's people you follow on Twitter and there's there's po- there's people that you just regularly pay attention to on Twitter and RJ is one of those. Like I'm I'm looking forward to Randy Orton being on uh uh what's the show Wrestling called? Wrestling with your Drink- in your underwear. 
Yeah, drinking, drinking coffee, coffee in your, in your underpants yes. or whatever. So that'll be that. That that's it. That, well, okay, that's actually a visual I probably could have done without. But well, the there Randy we go. barely wears pants to begin with. Come on, come fair. On. I mean, we're quarantine time. Ain't none of us wearing pants, bro. I mean, somebody had to drive to the studio today. So, although I did remember to put on actual shoes and not Crocs today, so. <laughs> There's no like, shame in Crocs, like I bro. I walked no over to get a taco, and I'm just like, I'm just wearing Crocs, man. I don't give a shit right now. <laughs> oh, business casual. Um, oh, guys, thank you so much for joining us. The chat just, the phone just died again, so I don't can't get to the chat room. Uh, thank you guys for for being a part of the show, hanging with us tonight through so much weirdness and professional wrestling over all of that kind of weirdness too. Uh, but no, please go check out everything again. Shout outs to our boys, uh, PB Smooth, Derek Direction, doing their air bike competition this Thursday. I believe it's on Instagram live. Uh, so look out for that. And thank you everybody that did support our friend Dutters. Uh, with everything uh, through all of that, um, we what else is there to plug? Uh, uh, there's a uh, let's say Prospect Pro Wrestling uh, Fight Underground new matches this week and new matches for the next several weeks at the very least, and I can say there's conversations about having more wrestling for you to watch. Uh, that's all I can say about that, or at least some kind of interesting content of some sort and i bumped my cord again uh we're gonna see you're gonna look at ronnie uh but uh so so yeah ronnie what do you have to plug sir what is happening in your near future that th- uh, that people out there would be interested in viewing well i do have a podcast with mr tyler klein yeah we should do another episode of that yeah we do need to uh it's a uh most excellent toy adventures. Everybody go uh, do that. We're going to do another episode Great. soon. So over at SorgatronMedia.com, look it up. You can check yeah. out the first two episodes. And uh, this Friday, at a location I cannot discuss, uh, we will have Real Shoot Wrestling Live mm-hmm. on Facebook Live. And then uh, then the following week we'll have an episode. So, yeah. We have episodes every week. There you go. Uh, Alex Carr oh, is... Oh, eventually, oh. I'll be at Fight Underground. Eventually, some, yeah, in some shape or form, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Um, and also, Alex, of course, occupyprowrestling.com. That's right. Um, doing some, doing a bit of revamping, retooling of things. Uh, I'm doing a soft relaunch of the podcast in the near future under powertothesparks.com. You, uh, you can also find merch to buy at shop.powertothesparks.com. And uh, I have t-shirts at whatabaneuver.net under Occupy Pro Wrestling, including this nice uh, Wrestling Explains It All Mm t-shirt. And, uh, yeah, there's there's a lot of things in the works, and I'm very excited to finally have kind of pulled myself partly out of the pit that I was in trying to deal with various things over the last few months. But, uh, yeah, I'm excited. And also, because Mad Mike isn't here to do it, uh, YouTube.com slash Poppy. <laughs> yes. Yes, of course. Uh, thank you, everybody. Thank you for being part of this. We'll see you guys next time. Mayhem out. Wait, just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.